The date is November 15, 1998. The survivor is Aaron Zabo, last name at birth, Zabo. The interviewer, Martha Fraser, city and state, Bronx, New York, country, United States of America. The language is English. My name is Martha Fraser, M-A-R-T-H-A-F-R-A-Z-E-R. -E Today is November 15, 1998. I'm conducting an interview with Aaron Zabo in the Bronx, New York, United States of America in the English language. Please state and spell your name. My name is Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, Zabo, S-Z-A-B-O. And what was your name at birth? S-Z-A-B-O, Zabo. And the first name was Aaron? Aaron, yeah. What is your birth date and your current age? October the 10th, 1929, and I was just 65 years old. Please state and spell your city and country of birth. I was born in a village called Baleluchke. How to spell it, I don't know. And I was Czechoslovakia at the time I was born. And what are the names of your parents and your siblings? I had a uh, mother and father and three more brothers. My mother's name is, is, is Leia. My father's name is Mendel. My uh, oldest brother is Bearish. My the other one is uh, Chaim Leib. Another one Benjamin, and of course it's me, Aaron. Were you the youngest? I was the youngest. Please describe your village as you recall it from your childhood. It's a very small village. It's a farming village. My uh, father and mother had a general store there, and uh, that's the way they made a living there. About how many Jews lived in your it's town? Only, it's only one family, it's only uh, we lived most of the time. Sometimes we had for a year or two, somebody moved in, but basically we were the only Jews living there all the time. And what were the uh, other kinds of people who lived there? Uh, they were basic uh, religion. They were Re basically uh, all Christians, but there were three different denominations. It was Russian Orthodox, Roman Catholics, and uh, Protestant, which is a small denomination, Protestant. Were the uh, people ethnically Czech uh, living there? I really don't know. Uh, they were uh, basically uh, Ukrainians, I would imagine, right? that, that, that because now it became Ukrainian. How did you observe uh, Judaism in your home? We used to go uh, to synagogue, which was about five kilometers, which was about uh, three and a half miles. We used to go there at least once a week. Sometimes what town was the synagogue? It was also called, my town was Malilushki, that was uh, Valkilushki. Bigger, bigger town. And uh, about how many Jewish families lived in the, that there town? There was about uh, 70 or 75 Jewish families living there. And you said you went to the synagogue there about yeah, once a week? About once a week or sometimes more than once a week. Did you also observe the Judaism within your own home? Yes, there was no question, yes. And well, how did, uh, were you a, a kosher family? A kosher family, yes. So where would you get your meat? In the next town. So anything connected with the uh, Jewish religion that you needed, well, you could get in the next town? Yes. Did you have any Jewish education? We, we used to go to, uh, to a, like a Sunday school, if you will. We used to go there once or twice a week after regular school, we used to go there. Did you have a particular holiday you enjoyed uh, when you were a child? I don't remember if there's any, they going back many years. And, uh, no enjoyment. As far as I, since I was born, there was no enjoyment there. It's for a Jew. What kind of school did you attend? It's a public school. We went to public school. And how old were you when you started? I, I think uh, they started at the age of seven, the first grade up there. And how many grades did you attend? I think uh, uh, two or three. And that was a very, very bad experience. You used to go there to school. Uh, that was winter time, so you held up your coat outside. You found that mice, that dreads in your pockets. Kids used to beat you up as a Jew. It was a terrible uh, experience. Did you find this kind of uh, anti-Semitism toward you only when you went to school, or was it also when it you It was always. Uh, it was always around. Uh, 
uh, I remember my father, uh, my older brother, when was going to Sedega on a Saturday, so he had to a mother him. And my brother at that time was, I don't know, 16, 17 years old, and he threw him into the water. They came, the police came and arrested us for defending him. Of course, they let him out soon, but nonetheless, they, the Jews were harassed, Jews were a person on grata. In other words, Jews were hunted like uh, you hunt a wild animal. Was this under the Czechoslovakian government? No, that was, that was, uh, what I remember, that was after the Hungarians came in. When you're describing the uh, conditions in your school, was this uh, before the Hungarians came in? No, after. Do you recall anything about how Jews were treated before the Hungarians? No. So um, how old were you when the Hungarians came? Well, I was at 9.38, so I was, I was eight years old. Did you attend school for long after the Hungarians came? Well, as I said, we were maybe a year or two after they came in. It was just, just did not work out to go to school because they used to come home beaten up all the time. So then, what were you doing with your time once you no longer attended well, school? Well, so stood at home, stood in the rooms, so stood in, in, uh, in the house most of the time. Once the Hungarians occupied your town, uh, how did your parents do with their store? That was a very, that, that's it. They took away all the papers that you could sell this or sell that. And they took my father, of course, my father took to the army because he was, uh, so, so it was only my mother. She uh, had to. Whatever she did, I don't know how she fed us, but she did. And we what, were here. What were your older brothers doing at that time? My older brother was not there. My older brother, the one that survived in here, he was at my grandmother's house, at my, my mother's father's and mother's house. And where was that? That was a, a couple of, a couple of uh, maybe 10 or maybe 15 uh, miles away from our town. Why was he living there? Well, I guess they had more food to eat, I guess, I don't know. And what were your other two older they brothers? Were they were with us, they were home, three of us were home. Do you recall any way in which your uh, family was able to support itself during this time? Well, we, we, we ate the support, support is a big word, we ate. Where did you get the food? That's a good question, I don't know. Did you have any idea of what your father was doing in the Army? Were you communicating no. with him at all? <coughs> no. Not me, maybe my mother, but I don't know. So how long was he gone? He was gone from 1938 to 1943. In 1943, they let him out, and then they took us uh, to the death camps. They took us to Auschwitz, they took us to Bathhausen. As you were growing up, did you have any friends at all among the other children in the village? No. As far as uh, all the friends uh, that were before, they just moved away from the Jews. That way that, as I said, the Jews were, they were chasing us like, uh, uh, like the quadrants. And there was no law to protect them. Anything went. Uh, and I, my mother, even the, 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 the priest used to say hello to her once in a while, but once, after, after 1940 or 41, he used to cross the street not to say hello to my mother. That was a certain amount of hatred that it's uh, even visible today. If you pick out the papers, you see it in Eastern Europe, you got it, you got it even today. Now you mentioned uh, your, your grandparents. Did you uh, have a relationship with or see any other extended family members when you were a child? <clears throat> no, because uh, everybody, uh, there was no rich people, uh, as far as Jews are concerned, let's say, the, as I said, there were 70 Jewish families in the, the town that I mentioned. If there was one that had that food every day, he was a rich man. That's about it. There was no rich, there was no rich Jews. This, 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 this idea that every Jew was rich is uh, so far-fetched. Maybe the biggest cities like uh, Budapest or Prague or, or Berlin or Vienna, yes, you had a few outstanding Jews that were better to do, but by basically most of them were 
living from hand to mouth. Really. This phenomenon that we got that every Jew is rich, that was not true. Do you know how long your family had been living in this area, your, <coughs> your grandparents? Well, the, uh, uh, I have uh, somebody, a distant family member, went through and uh, looked up the family tree and he went back for like 650 or 700 years that they lived in that area. So did you have uh, aunts and uncles, cousins in the general area? Yes, yes. My, my mother came from five and my father came from nine. and So there were cousins and, and aunts and uncles. and uh, yes. But, uh, but not in your particular town because you were the only family there. And yeah, but the next town, two towns down. In other words, within a mile, or a bit of a radius of maybe 15 miles or 10 mile radius, so they, were, they were living there. Do you have any idea why your parents uh, want, had wanted to move to this particular town? Well, uh, I don't really know the idea why they moved to the town. The idea of it is that uh, my father built a house the, when the, the year I was born up there. Maybe the property was cheaper there. Maybe, well, I don't know, but he built a house there. So he moved there because he had, he had four children. <coughs> he had four children. He had to uh, provide them with some shelter, no? Oh, maybe that's why they moved. Now, where was the uh, store in relationship to your house? And then and, and the house. The houses were built at the front was a store, and the back you had bedrooms and you went to sleep. What was the uh, living quarter area like? Well, this was one room. Uh, there was a store in the front. In the middle, there was a, uh, a kitchen, if you will, you know, with an oven. And mother used to bake bread once a week. And in the back, there was one room that everybody slept in that room. There was no heat and no end of plumbing. Did you have land out and back? Yes, we did. We had, uh, there was, must have been about, uh, I don't know, five, six acres of land there. So that we planted it every, uh, every summer. There was beans, corn, potatoes. So the summertime, that's the way we, uh, we, we survived for two, two, three months while it was growing. The winters were hot. Where was your house and store in relationship to the town? Was it sort of in the center? It was like in the center. One, the, the town was one avenue, Main, uh, Main Street. And then on, on the left and the right, there were houses. And the back of the houses were farms. That's it. And where was the school? The school was about uh, six, seven blocks away. Still on that one Main Still on Street? The one, yeah. And how about the churches? Also, the churches were also there uh, on, on the main street. There, there were uh, three. There was, there was uh, Roman Catholic, Russian Orthodox, and a little Protestant uh, church, yes. How were the Protestants treated? Listen, when you treated that bad, who you care what, what the next door guy is treated? You, you treated pretty lousy, so what do you... Uh, they were a small minority, They were though. small minority, yes. So about how many people do you think live in this town? The, the, I don't know. I got no idea. Maybe about 1,500, 2,000 something people. Maybe uh, 100 families or so. Was there anything as a child that you uh, ha enjoyed doing? <laughs> no, not really, no. <laughs> and the period of time when your father was gone and you were helping your mother, what well, were we only helped our mother to, to do what? The problem was there was nothing to do yet. In the, the summertime, we helped to pick up whatever the, in the garden, whatever it was. But otherwise, there was very little to do. There was, not, uh, there was no television, and there was no radios, there was no cars. It's all horses, and, uh, and that's it. You plowed with horses, you, you did everywhere else. That was your way of transportation. You've mentioned going to the larger town where the synagogue was. Did you ever go anywhere to any other uh, larger not town? Not me. No, I don't remember. No, not me. I, maybe. I don't know. I don't remember going to any place, no. When my... Uh, all the brothers, they, yes, yes, they went to the, the next town, which was about 50 kilometers, I guess, it was Munkach, that's the bigger town. That was it, that was the big town. 
At the time your father came back in 1943, um, did uh, you or your family have any um, news coming into the town as to what was happening around? There was no news. No, as I said, there was no... I don't even remember if there were any newspapers. Maybe there was any, but I don't remember any. Uh, but there was no radio. There was no electricity, so there couldn't be no radio. Do you recall if your father talked to you at all about his experiences? No, no. So how uh, did you find out about the German occupation of Hungary? Well, we did not find out the German occupation of Hungary. Most of us, uh, anyway, from my point of view, we did, I didn't know. I thought the Hungarians occupied us. We didn't know that the, that the Hungarians made a pact with Germany. We didn't know that, so we did not know the German, German we didn't see the German troops. At the time Hungarians. the Hungarians occupied your town, uh, had there been any native Hungarians living there before they... Uh, there, there was always uh, uh, what they call, yeah, there were Hung native Hungarians, native Russians that lived there together, but they, they were part of our town. Uh, when Germany, when the Hungarians came in, of course they welcomed them because they were, they were the ethnic Hungarians. Not too many, there was a few, you know, a few of Czechs, a few Hungarians. Uh, there were, there were uh, what they call Schwabs, they were descendants of Germany. Some of them were there too. So it was like, uh, you know, living there, but they all spoke the language of, 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 of what we spoke there. And that was the end of it, you know, they didn't, uh, but then they chose sides, everybody chose, and uh, even they chose against the Germans, but they were against the Jews. Let's say that you were a, a successful, you see what's coming and you were successful going into the forest as a Jew. If you went to the forest, you better, you better change, you have to change your name. Otherwise, if they found out you're Jewish, they give you something, or well, they killed you there, there on the spot, or they give you something uh, to go in there and then that they you that you're not going to come out alive to get uh, ammunition from a German uh, uh, ammo dump or something like that. You mean if you joined a uh, partisan if, group? If you were successful to escape and you went into the fire, which was a lot of partisans around there. Don't forget it's the Carpathian Mountains and the Carpathian Mountains are, are rest. They go from, from uh, parts of Slovakia and to Poland and to, uh, they go all the way through there, they, they rest. So there was a lot of partisans there. Did you know anyone who was in the I partisans? don't know. When the Hungarians were occupying the town, who was actually running the town? Did you see uh, soldiers? Did you see police? No, you didn't see any soldiers. There were police. But Hungarian the police were the police? Same. They, they just changed uniform. They were the same people. They just changed uniform. But they were all the same people. Who had lived there before? Who lived there before. The same the, the people that were the police under the, 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 the Czech regime. Now the Hungarians came in. They were the same people. Maybe the commanders were different, which I don't know. But, uh, Otherwise, the, the people that they used to encounter on, on the streets, the police, they would say. In 1944, when uh, the Germans occupied that area, or occupied well, the Hungary, Germans, did you see uh, any? There again, we did not see any Germans. The, 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 the Hungarians uh, came in and they got us together, they put us on train, and the Germans came in. Uh, uh, we didn't see any Germans, really, to my knowledge. I don't know, maybe I'm making a mistake, but we didn't see any Germans until we got to Auschwitz. So in the spring of 1944, when you were still at your home, the people... Uh, the spring, I think, is way before the spring. I think it, it's, uh, they took us uh, away for... Uh, The third, the third month, which is March. Before Passover? Yeah, before Passover. Who was there in your home? You said your father had come back. My father was there, and the two brothers, and my mother. One brother, he, he, he disappeared, the guy that survived. So was he with your grandparents still? No, no, he disappeared. He, he came back, and he disappeared. He just went, went away, and he disappeared at the woodwork, and he, uh, he was in the forest until uh, well, his, his close body uh, betrayed him, and then they caught him, and then he es escaped again, and then he, he was a, uh, uh, he was working for a, uh, some uh, Hungarian general as a, uh, uh, to take care of his private horse, 
And uh, what happened, he misbehaved, and they took him uh, again, and he, he escaped again. He survived, that's how he survived. And his name again? What was his name? His name is uh, Berish. And he in the United States is Bernard. So he was not at home. It was you was and your next home. two older brothers. Just and your mother me and father. Two older brothers and mother and father, yes. So how did you uh, receive notification that you were going to be taken away from your home? They were not no notification. Just come, they came in and knocked on the door and with, uh, with, uh, and not even a truck, just toss a buggy and uh, horse and wagon and go on the truck and go. They had no notification. Did they tell you you could take anything? We didn't know nothing. Leave everything, everything is for you. We had to take us to work in some place in Hungary. And, and you but were... But the only thing, the train was going east instead of going uh, west. Well, when they put you in the horse and buggy, you were the only family in town. We were the only family, yes. So where did they take they you at first? They took us to, to the ghetto, to Munkash. They didn't stop for uh, and could you describe uh, the ghetto there as you saw it when it you was, came in? It was a, uh, a brick factory owned by a Jew. And they took it away from him and it made it into a ghetto. And what was it like there? Were, there, <laughs> were you among the first people brought in or were there no, other there were people, people there? No, there were people there already. But uh, you know, as soon as they brought him in, they stood there for about, I don't know, a week or two or three weeks. And, Put him, put us on trains, and uh, send us to uh, to Poland, to Auschwitz. While you were there, did you have any food in the ghetto? There again, uh, whatever you had to scrunch around. Um, uh, my father had uh, went around. I don't know how he got, but he, we 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 got some food. Yes. How I don't know. What What was your living situation? Where were you sleeping? Uh, there's. Uh, I don't know if you ever visit a, a, a brick factory. There's there's, bar there's like uh, open uh, uh, factories, open open places, and that's everybody got up a little corner, and that's where you slept. Did you find any people there that you knew or any relatives? Not me, but I'm sure that my father found people that he knew. That he knew. None of your extended family was there, aunts. Probably uncles? there was, but uh, you know, we don't. I didn't, I didn't know them all. Did you have any idea what was happening or where you were going? No, 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 no. Nobody, uh, I would imagine some people knew about it, but I didn't. You still thought you were going to go to well, work? Well, I didn't know where I'm going. What, what am I, uh, <laughs> it was a kid. How old were you at that time? Well, 1944, I was, I was just 14, so I was going to 15. So after two or three weeks there, what happened? They put us on trains and we went uh, east, we went to Auschwitz. Could you tell us they, about that trip? They, sep they, 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 they uh, uh, as soon as we got to Auschwitz, we were packed into cattle cars like, like cattle. And uh, as soon as we got to Auschwitz, uh, we got out and they separated us. Uh, one to the left, one to the right. Women one side, men the other side. And between the men too, one to the left, one to the right. You know, who knew which is was which is good, which is bad. See? So then, uh, and I, we were in Auschwitz for about I think another two, three weeks. And the ones that they were, on, I don't know, on the left side, let's say, they were killed within, within that period. And the ones on the right side, they went, uh, they shipped us to Matthaus, which I was one of them, and my two brothers were with me too. So now, when, when was the last time you saw your parents? That's it, at Auschwitz. Never see them again. Did you have any idea while you were still at Auschwitz what I had know. happened? I had no, no idea what they do and what they don't do. Uh, I did not have no idea. That does not mean that other people didn't have no idea. I didn't have an idea. And then we, we got and we got, uh, we went to, to uh, Mauthausen. That's so Austria. when did you actually find out what was had happened at Auschwitz? Uh, after the after I got out of the the camps, and uh, somebody in Austria was walking, recognized me, and he says, "Your father and mother went home." 
Sarah went home too. But it was so. So all the way through the whole uh, experience, you still had no idea no. of what had happened there. No. Could you describe the uh, pr what you went through at Auschwitz, the processing at Auschwitz? You and your two brothers. The processing at Auschwitz is, uh, was very simple. We separated, and they put us into. They, were, they had very long barracks, and they had uh, like like uh, shelves, three decker shelves. Long ones. Each decker you used to take in seven or eight people to sleep on. <coughs> so that's where we that's where we slept, and that's where we were in the barracks. Used to get a bowl of uh, soup a day with a slice of bread. That was it. That, that's where you lived for uh, the little you out of there. That's it. Did you re uh, receive a number there? No. Did no, you have no. uh, the prison clothing? Was yes, your clothing? yes. They give you as soon as you went in there. They, 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 they when you came out of the train, they took you in. They give you a shower. They wiped off, and they give you. They took all your clothes away, and they gave you the uh, the striped the pajamas. Did you have to be shaved or disinfected? No, they do nothing. With it. They, I not, not, I don't know. They do nothing. So at this point, you were with your two older brothers. I was there with my two brothers, yes. Did uh, you have any other types of people with you in your barracks, or was it all people from Hungary, Jews all, from Hungary? At that time, it was all, all people from, uh, from, the, from the, my, our part, from the Carpathia Mountains. All of them were from there. Different towns. There were a lot of little villages there. And uh, some village had one Jew, some people village had uh, two Jewish families, some village had 20 Jewish families, that's it. That's all them, they were right from that uh, part, yes. And who was in charge of your barracks? Uh, there were, uh, uh, first of all, there were, what they call a, 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 a black elster. In other words, it was, it was like he was the, the, the barrack. Uh, elder, he was in charge, but he was basically from one of the prisoners, one of the Jews. Then there were the Germans. They were not assessed. They were regular, regular German soldiers. They were not. They assessed for the higher rank. The uh, the uh, everyday guy. He was just a German soldier. He, whatever that he was in charge. And if you did not behave, he killed you right on the spot with a two by four. That's it. Did you see that happen to oh, other sure. people? Oh, sure. That happened every day. That happened every day. And they uh, used to laugh. That's it. Laugh it off. Did you have the uh, lineups, the appels? Yes, they had every morning you had an appel. You had them every morning you had an appel, yeah. Came and counted, counted the everything. And, and and then they dismiss you. Then what did you do the rest of the time? Uh, nothing, nothing. Just stay in the barrack. Just try to stay out of trouble. That's it. And from there, uh, they took us, as I said, we went, uh, that was not a long time, it was only three weeks. And then took us to Mauthausen, which Mauthausen was to a degree worse than Auschwitz. Because in Mauthausen, there was the Hitler Jugend, used to come with the dogs. And that was the entertainment for the weekend. We have to stop now. We'll continue on the next tape. Okay.